Hello, this is Michael Mooney with SMAP3D. Today we wanted to take a brief introduction uh, over the next 12 minutes with SMAP3D Steel. Uh, this is a full-on structural steel detailing tool and we're going to dive into some of the, the specifics. Um, if some of the things that we don't get to that is more important to you, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to set up something custom for you. So here we are in SOLIDWORKS and we'll notice when we have SMAP3D Steel turned on, we'll have a new tab in the Command Manager. We have a whole big group of tools here to work with specific structural steel detailing things like connection plates, connection details, uh, joints, stairs, builds materials, automated drawings, facades, roofings, uh, connection to CNC, output to CNC, and when it comes time to create beams, it's just simply picking on sketch lines, 2D or 3D sketches, and then picking what kind of profile, what standard we want to use. These standards are customizable. Choose how we want to arrange or position the profile of the beam onto the sketch path. And then we say OK, and it's going to generate in an assembly environment here our structural steel members. Furthermore, if we wanted to, uh, to have different sizes for different legs and things of that nature, we can, of course, add that, rotate um, the specific profiles, and uh, get our desired result. Now, we're not limited to just adding beams along sketches. We can also add beams through points. So if we just have points out here, we can pick on two points, and now we'll create a beam between those. So even less work, and um, then we can get into trimming things up. So many different ways, or several different ways here to uh, to do that. In this case, I'm just going to uh, either contour shape or or bottom together, or I, in this case, I'm going to miter them. So my first miter, I'm going to have zero gap. Over here, I'm going to throw in a five millimeter gap there, just to uh, to make things fit in together a little easier in the field. Um, when it comes time for trimming things up, we can get into uh, some other styles as far as coping the beam end. And so then we can choose the parameters of that and have this automated as well. So doing some more advanced kind of cutting. Now sometimes we want to come in here and trim multiple beams with a common entity like this, the face of the bottom of the beams here. So we can do that quickly and easily. When it comes time for cross bracing, those are just a different type of a beam, right? So we can just come in and also automate the gusset plates as well. So we'll create another beam here. We'll choose a different profile, like an L profile. And we're not limited to stay on the sketch. We can actually offset things instead of having to adjust the sketch. So with our gusset plate, we'll just come over here and select the faces that we want to connect so that we'll automatically trim that beam back for us. We can set up presets um, so that it remembers our parameters. So we don't have to key in all of these values every time. And this can help us adhere to specific codes that you might be uh, required to design around. Over here, we want to connect a beam. And instead of just trimming it, I'm going to actually put some more connected details. And so in this case, I'm going to say that I want a double end plate. And it will automatically pick the size. Another type of connection detail might be a miter plate. I want to connect these two beams together, and instead of welding them permanently, I want to make something that can be a, a little more um, flexible. So when we select our beams, then we'll get a list out of our, our, uh, our standards, and it'll have all of our, our bolting information. We can go in and, and make some modifications to this, or even save that as a different preset. So I'm going to say I want the top to be flat here so that I can get my, my platform uh, flooring down. And we can continue on to, to, to trim things up or to connect things um, in different manners here. In this case, we can even make changes to existing end plates if we decide later, oh, I need a double end plate here on this end, and even create a special little end plate here that's going to be set up to easily um, take on a haunch plate. So with our haunch plate tool, and we're not going to get into every single tool that we have, but these are some of the kind of bigger ones, I think. 
the haunch plate, we just need to select what faces it's going to connect to, and it'll go ahead and start identifying. We can control how much parameters we want here. Maybe I want some extra stiffening there, and then we can even further reinforce this with some ribs. So we actually have a rib tool in here as well. And we just need to pick the beam that we want to put a rib on, and then where do we want it to be? Right in the middle of the rib or to a specific feature? So I'll pick the end of this haunch plate and uh, off the cord there and then I can give it its parameters as well so it pops that in for me and, uh, and life is good and it also put one on the other side now tying this into the ground we can also have another type of connection here with the base plate so with a base plate we can choose what beam we want to put it on what end of the beam do we want it to be offset from the, the floor do we want to put an anchoring uh, shear stub in there as well? So we can get in here and have control over that as well. Do we want to rotate it or what what parameters do we want to work with? How long is it? What uh, beam profile do we want it to use? As well as if we wanted to put bolts in there, what specific kind of bolts and all of that good stuff. All right, so we got our base plate in there. We could repeat that onto the other um, beams as well. Um, but now we need to, to get some more connection details up here as far as maybe I want to put a clip angle um, connection. And so we can automate this as well. Just select the faces of the beams that we want to connect and then we can uh, have full control over the parameters of these. Okay. We can also get into, uh, you know, instead of adding the bolts with the feature, you can come back later and you can say, well, now I want to manually add bolts. Uh, and we can just pick the uh, connecting faces here or edges in this case since we're working with bolts and then we can tell it what type of bolt we want it to be and, uh, and get into all of those parameters as well. Uh, in addition to um, adding them one at a time I could also come in here and say well let's do this in a, in a little faster way um, once I get these these two in here we could actually come in and select faces if it was going to go through multiple layers or multiple holes in one face that type of thing so I can get into a multi select and pick these sides and say hey that looks good and it automatically picks the correct length there for us based on your standards and recognizes those those holes that have the common faces okay so manual boltings is one option. Again, all of the rest of the boltings I've been adding in there automatically when I've added the features uh, and the components. Another type of connection that I might need to get into would be a, a bearing gusset plate. Okay. This is a great little tool that we can come in and just say, well, what um, beam and what face do we need to connect these multiple items to? And then uh, we can have some controls in there as far as what shape do we want it to be and in that type of thing. But it's going to come in and create these, um, these mounting situations or connection details for us. Now let's step back here and take a look at this. Instead of using a, a miter plate here, I could come in and put in a, a splice joint. Okay. So we can pick the parameters of how many uh, holes do we want and what pattern. And again, with our manual bolting here, I could come in and quickly and easily just select the two faces where are going to be interfacing the bolts. And then this way, our bill of materials is going to be nice and complete. Now for stairs. Stairs is a complex operation and uh, time consuming. So all we need to do, is, since we've got this automated, we can come in and pick an existing uh, edge of a beam or we don't even have to have anything it can just be some sketch information and then you can put in the parameters of your stairs you can save these as, as favorites um, and then the same with guardrails pick the edge of the uh, the geometry that you want to to put a railing on uh, what size do you want it to be what are all of the parameters here that we want to work with um, and then we'll say okay to that and it will just generate our hand railings for us now SMAP 3D Steel is also going to keep track of, uh, we have another tab over in the command, um, in the task pane, and we can keep track of the parameters of the, the project. So the customers who these things can be written to, uh, to other areas like bills of materials, that type of thing. But 
also keeping track of all the position numbers of our beams and our plates and our nuts and our bolts and our fasteners um, and so that we can number things easily. This is all going to help when it comes time for um, creating your drawings. Speaking of which, some of these automated processes we get in here for creating bills of materials. Okay, so I can go ahead and update my metadata or all of the details for my bill of materials and say let's create a bill of materials in Excel. And so now we can come over here, we put our job number in, and this template is customizable so you can customize it the way that you want things to be looking. But we got all of these different sheets in here and uh, depending on what level of detail and what pieces of information is important to you, now we have a very comprehensive and complete bill of materials uh, with many different options, even getting into the cutting angles and those types of things. Now when it comes time for cutting and, and manufacturing and fabrication, we might need to put things out to a, a CNC machine or a water jet or a, a plasma cutter. So we can pick, you know, more specifically, it's is usually more for plates. Um, but we pick what items we want it to be and give it a, a job number here. And say so to go ahead and export this out as a DXF. Okay. And another option here would be getting into uh, full on SolidWorks drawings. So I could do the entire assembly. Uh, or you can do individual parts one at a time and select which ones you want. So it will automatically detail things out based on your SolidWorks drawing template. So you can control it with that and then we can get in here we have our drawings um, with our in our SolidWorks drawings as well as that DXF. Uh, and then for those people that need we also have the capability to export out to CNC machines. So we can go to NC data um, and various other formats. So there's our plate drawing. Okay. And so yeah, hopefully this is going to be very helpful for you guys. If you want to look at a more detailed look and, uh, and dive in specifically for your customers needs, uh, feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to, uh, to set up a custom presentation for you.